Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording, so I have to cut this bit now. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we are interviewing um, a leader and business coach who helps companies to launch successful products globally. Um, he has worked with me. He's, um, he's not only someone I've worked with and I really appreciate. I also consider someone as a, as a friend. Um, today, we are, I'm super thrilled to connect with Mario Alvarez. Um, so welcome, Mario. I'm just going to put the gallery view. There we go. Okay. Welcome, Mario. So um, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk. Um, as you've mentioned, we've known each other for, for a little while now, had the pleasure to work together on a number of projects and glad to continue to work with you today and in the future. Great. So um, just give you a little description of who you are and what do you do? Um, so, so who am I? Um, so I live in Spain, been in Europe for a while now. I've lived in France, Spain, Japan. Originally, actually from California, um, and what I do is I, I focus on helping companies deal with people. When we talk about people, we talk about understanding and motivating their employees, and really understanding and 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 really diving into what their customers really need. So, if you can really understand what employees need and really understand what your customers need, you know you can create something amazing, right? Because you understand what people need and you understand what it takes for that team to give their most. And when they give their most, they're gonna surprise their customer beyond anything they expected. 100%, that's, that's why I love from you, Mario. You are someone super <laughs> passionate about people because people drives business and yeah. those we, you know, who are, yeah. Nothing gets done in a company, you think about it, right? Maybe tomorrow we'll have robots, we'll have you know artificial intelligence. My business partner in leadership says, you know, everything absolutely everything your salary the coffee cleaning the <laughs> bathroom everything is done by people and somehow right. we don't think about people it's amazing why why is that well we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later on but yeah. that's that's the question that always we always ask right why people why we, we forget about people when and on the other hand why we say people is always important and we don't take care of that so um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the current situation, this lockdown that we, we are, everyone, suffering. Um, so um, how are you doing with this situation and how are you getting on with, with the lockdown? How are you getting on? So, so it's interesting, right? I think, I, think, I think it's interesting to see how we're all doing and how we're all evolving, right? Initially, I think we we're all like, wow. <laughs> we can't go outside. What does this mean? How scary is it? Mm -hmm. Depends on the country you're in. Spain got hit pretty hard. So we all started knowing people that were sick and getting serious. So at first we're like, oh, right? Kind of shocked. The second week we're like, oh, we're, we've landed. We're learning how to use Zoom. We're learning how to deal with it. We're starting to get a rhythm. Third and fourth week we start learning about other people getting sick. And I think now it's shifting on, okay, and what's going to happen next? Are we going to get out? Are we not going to get out? And I think everybody has their personal situations, right? Everybody, everybody should not pretend this is a normal situation, right? Everybody knows, mm -hmm. some people know people that are sick. Some people are worried about their own future or they're worried about somebody that they love's future. They're mm -hmm. dealing with their kids screaming at them in their ears while they're trying to work. Today I was in a conference call when somebody was super embarrassed because the dog kept barking. You know, these are not normal times. Let's not pretend they're normal, but let's also accept that that's what the reality is. Like there's, there's a, this incredible capacity of human beings to adapt to new situations. So, you know, yeah, this is scary. This is uncomfortable, but people's doing amazing things. And exactly. Right. It, like, you know, like you said it, like I always say, if I have to live through something I didn't choose, I'm not going to say I like it. I don't like it. But you know what? If I'm going to pay a big price for it, I want to get something out of it. Exactly. Because I'm paying a big price. So I'm, like for me, I'm taking a big effort in saying, when we get out of here, 
what am I going to say I accomplished in this time? Exactly. You that cannot be. Mean, yeah, it doesn't mean I chose this. I would not have chosen this. But since I'm here, you know, I, I want to do something that I can think, wow, remember when we were locked up inside our houses? Love it. Look at what I, look at what I did. I'm really proud of what I did. But you know Love what? It. I'd rather not have done that. I rather have had a normal life. But since I couldn't, look at what I did. And this is, my, this is something I made and I'm proud of it. Um, did you start uh, any new habit or did you start new habits? And if, if yes, what are they? Or maybe... Oh my God, a lot of my habits came, right? All right. I, I am a strong believer in habits and you learn this in leadership development. Hmm. Our brain only likes to make certain number of decisions every day, right? The more decisions you make, it's called decision fatigue, right? I don't know if you know this, but like Steve yeah. Jobs wore the same clothes every day because he's like, I don't want to decide over them. Yeah. So during the first, I, my favorite exercise is to go swimming. And swimming allows me to sleep well. It's like part of my mental and physical health. Guess mm -hmm. what? I can't go swimming. Right. Right. So I know that sounds really stupid, but it actually really changed my life. So I created completely new habits during the first few weeks, right? You know, try to stay, get up at the same time every day, you know, do a little bit of exercise morning, afternoon, you know, just like a normal day, right? right. I have created habits around how I work. Like I know I like to do deep thinking, problem solving in the morning. So mm -hmm. I create habits around creating, you know, an hour and a half in the morning where I can focus on that try to do meetings in the afternoon answer emails later in the afternoon so i've created habits around doing that and i i really try to push people on respecting those habits right if i have an appointment with myself to work in deep stuff when somebody asks me for a meeting at that time well first i'm going to say you know can we do it at another time yeah if i see that that's going to not be impossible you know it's, it's all, we all have to be flexible right but mm. you know Initially, I'll be like, well, you know what? I've got something planned for that time. How about this time? Yeah. Right? And the other thing has been, how do I emotionally connect? Right? I... Introverts and extroverts are different, right? I'm sort of in the middle. But if you're an extrovert, you get energy from talking to people. So I highly encourage people to say, just send a WhatsApp and say, you know, Miguel, can you do a quick coffee for five minutes? You know, just connect the way we you know and i think people are starting to do that and i think i'll tell you a lot of my friends are in california i live deeply in japan i've had more coffees with people in california and japan than i had in years because now 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 it doesn't matter if you are in barcelona and i'm half an hour away or if you're in tokyo right right So from that yeah. standpoint, it's also been amazing, right? <clears throat> to reconnect with old friends that were far away. That, that, you know, I never would have thought, let's do a virtual coffee. Never. And now we're and forced now we're, to. Yeah, <laughs> we're forced to, but we're forced to. And you know what? I'd rather have a coffee or a beer with you in person. But if you're in Japan, I'm not going to do that. Exactly. And now something we would have never thought of doing a virtual beer or coffee Now we're doing it with friends that when this is over, you know, hopefully we'll say that we'll continue to do that once in a while. If you look at anybody in the world, I bet you can see something amazing and positive about them. And right. if you can see that and they can see that you see it, it's just amazing. It's just, a, it's, it's, it's amazing. Right? So what is it about my childhood? I think it's a value of people, right? People are, It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter where they're from. It's they have something to teach you. Okay. What can I learn from them? And, and you better respect them because if you didn't respect somebody in my family, you got killed, right? So, so that was easy. So what is it about my childhood? I think it's understanding that everybody's important and that everybody, no matter, no matter how rich, how poor, or even intelligent right sometimes i think we have a society that's almost snobbish around intelligence and we forget that intelligence is multi-dimensional right you could be amazing at music but terrible at math 
you could be great at personal relationships and terrible at grammar, right? But we tend to think of intelligence in terms of what we learn in school. And that's just certain types of intelligence, right? I, I guarantee you there is not one person on this planet that cannot teach you something. And if you approach life with that curiosity, I think it's extremely enriching for you and probably also for the other person. We, we will agree, it's very common to say, we have to grow the business, we have to be innovative, and we have to make profit this year. We all agree? Yes, we all agree. But as soon as you start making the trade-offs, are we gonna lose less money and take more risk? You know, you might have one opinion and I have another, and that's where all the conflict happens. So we align the people, first from a structure, from a strategy standpoint, from a structure, mm -hmm. and then from a cultural standpoint, right? I see. Um, we help companies work with, how do I really understand my customer? And how do I align? We exist to give our customer something. If we're right. not completely aligned to give it to them, somebody else probably will align better. Right. So it's, how do we align as an organization strategically to deliver what we want to our customer and unleash the power of our people? And how do you like that? I think that leads to in innovation. So mm -hmm. um, I would ask you, how do you encourage innovative ideas? You know, I, you know what we tell managers? We tell managers, and, and you're, you're very young, Miguel. Young people, <laughs> young people, you, you don't have to encourage young people. They are encouraged. People come the first day to the office full of energy and wanting to make a difference. You know what happens, unfortunately? Unfortunately, managers are great at killing that encouragement. They're excellent at it. They don't want to be excellent at it, but they've got pressure, they've got all this stuff going on, and they kill the energy that comes in the door. So the first thing we tell managers is, stop demotivating your people, right? Why do you think How that happens? That? Hmm. I think it happens because there's fear. I think whenever mm -hmm. you have a culture of fear, that destroys everything. So the first thing you have to do is understand where that culture is coming from. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you that not one person we've ever talked to wants to create a culture of fear. Not one. And yet, a lot of companies have a culture of fear. And when I talk about fear, I'm not talking about, oh my God, I'm gonna get killed, I'm gonna get fired. Mm. It, imagine you ask me to do something and I'm like, you know, I've got a crazy idea. I don't know if it's any good. I put it out on the table and you, and this has happened. Mario, what are you thinking? What kind of a crazy idea is that? Not only did you just demotivate me, you demotivated everybody in the room because nobody's gonna launch a crazy idea. Right? So the first thing we do is, you know, let's put some ground rules. When do we talk about ideas? How do we talk about them? But at the same time, let's get into reality. An idea from an idea to implementation is a trajectory. It's acknowledged that it's a trajectory and work along that trajectory. But it seems that right. most companies don't have the time to, to work on those, on those things. They just, we need to do the work and, and, you know, just do what I, do what, what, I, what I'm telling you to do and, and that's it. Like, yeah, I'll, and if you ask me to do that, I'll do it if I don't have a choice, but then don't ask me to have the customer be happy. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, we, we had a client that we were amazed at the low-end people, right? Whenever a customer had a problem, they would go solve it. If they had to go buy a part from a store, they would do it. And you know what happened to these guys? And they, they were the young engineers. They got scolded because they didn't follow the right protocols. They didn't fill out the right forms. Guess what? Those great people left, mm -hmm. right? And it's usually, it's usually around a fear and people have a really hard time putting their finger on that fear. And a lot of that time, the fear is real. The manager is creating that fear. But sometimes that fear is coming from within. I don't know what's going to happen. And when I don't know what's going to happen, I imagine, the, I imagine the worst. So we put on, you know, sometimes it's real, sometimes it's self-created. So we're, we work with companies to define 
what's your real culture? And you know what? Everybody wants to say, we're super open, we're great. Bullshit. They're not. So it's better to acknowledge what your reality is. Because if you tell me what my playground is, I can play. We were talking about right now that we're locked in our homes. I know a number of people right now that are thinking, what business am I going to launch right now? Because our playground has been reduced. But if you have your playground, you're going to start playing. What really is scary is I don't know what my playground is, so I don't play. Tell people like we have a chance now to maybe reach, reach young companies or middle companies that they don't have a culture or maybe young entrepreneurs. So how do you find company culture and why is it important? Company culture is what will keep you alive whenever the founders are dead and no longer at the company, right? Company culture is all the rules that are never written. Think about when you're at your, when you, if you go to your parents' house tomorrow, there are certain rules that nobody know that nobody's told you, but you know, their rules, right? Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid grabbing peanuts at a supermarket and eating mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. My father just looked at me and he said, did you pay for those? Right? So all these rules that you're taught, all these rules and they make you the person you are. That's the same thing that happens with company culture, right? If, all the rules that are not written down, which are the most important, right? That's what's going to drive your decision making. And if that, if that culture is strong, if we have a culture of my boss makes all the decisions, I don't do anything. Exactly. This is just another taker. Exactly. And if mm -hmm. I have a culture where I make sure the customer is, need is met profitably, then I start thinking, oh, Miguel is really upset with us. Let's figure out why he's upset. Well, if we do this, you know, what options do we have within the budget, mm -hmm. right? And then I start being creative. If I don't know what your problems are, if I don't know what I can do, if I don't know how much money we're making from you, everything just shuts down. And what do, what right. do these small or middle companies that they don't have budget for these and they just keep going and going and they have uh, unsatisfied employees and and they have good revenues and they keep going, but their employees, they just work for a payslip. What would you, so, what would you say to that company? So I, I would say if it works for you, you don't have to change, right? You may want right. to change because it's good for your employees and it makes you feel like, you know, you're a better person. But I would argue that those companies are shrinking, right? I live in a town where, you know, the municipality has given a grant for water. I have one person I can buy water from. They probably don't have to, they, they can probably do whatever they want. And I still have, I'm going to buy water from them because I have no choice. Mm. Right. But if I'm going to buy a different product, you know, and I have choices, I probably, you know, if you have a team of people trying to come up with the best solution, I'm probably going to come up with a better solution from a team that was excited about it. Right. Yeah. It may not be true if the only value I'm doing is price. If my objective is to be the cheapest in the market, I probably don't need to be that creative, right? I may have to be creative on how I save money. But if I want to add a differentiated value, right, I need emotions. You know, we are shifting from buying products to buying experiences. And the next Love shift it. is probably going to go from experience to values. Right, we have gone from buying shoes in our grandparents' age that protected us from the floor. Then we got we got inspired. We want to be like Michael Jordan. Just do it. Exactly. Right? I'm That's... inspired. And you want now one of the biggest growth areas are sustainable shoes, vegan friendly shoes, not animal. So, right. So things are shifting. Right. 100%. If I want somebody to create an experience, there's a lot of emotion there. I go to values, again, emotion. Emotion does not get created by a boss telling you what to do. Right? I, I actually think most decisions are made by emotion. We then justify them with logic. Right? How do you justify buying Michael Jordan shoes for $200 or $100? Right? Are you really going to play like Michael Jordan? You're not. When you put those shoes on, you're creating an emotional experience 
that you're going to be like him. When you buy vegan friendly, um, sustainable shoes, you're not going to walk any better on those shoes. You're buying an emotion that you're being responsible and you feel good about yourself. Right? 200%. Try doing that. Try doing that when your boss is saying, make shoes. It just doesn't happen. We always say that hiring us is a leap of faith because to give you an example, we got hired by an industrial company and the CEO said, what do you know about my business? And we said, absolutely zero. And we said, you know what? How long have you been doing this business? 25 years. And we said, and how long is your, most of your staff, well, most of my staff has been here over 15 years. And we said, if you hire a consultant that knows more than you and your people, you guys are really not that good. <laughs> right? Love it. And I said, yeah, I, we said, what we will do is we will try to understand what is blocking the organization from doing everything it can. Right. And it's all around people, right? You listen to the people at the front line. What is going on? Where are the blockages? And then you talk to customers. And then you start realizing that, you know, you understand what are the drivers for the customer. And then you start going backwards and saying, to deliver that value to the customer, what is preventing us? <laughs> and we get amazing, maybe in different words, but somebody in the organization has already known it their gut feeling that they weren't doing something right. And our job, our job is to make it flow, right? Sometimes our job is to also help put it in words that is actionable, right? Because sometimes people just know something's not working or, you know, we're not doing what the customer wants or we're not satisfying the customer. And what the CEO said, hears is, we're going to lose money if we do that. So how do we align those two, right? How do we make that somewhere in the middle? Why do we make it so that, you know, sometimes we've gone in and said, you know, maybe we don't want to measure how profitable each and every transaction is. Maybe we want to measure the profitability of the customer. And therefore, if we grow the customer, you know, if we grow the profitability of each customer, our entire business grows. So some, it's, it's, it's looking at the business in a slightly different way, understanding the drivers of the customer and the employees, and understanding what it takes to enable the employees to deliver that value. And sometimes it's mechanisms like the business model, it's how we track, it's, you know, who's got what responsibility. Sometimes it's organizational structure. And unfortunately, I have to tell you, sometimes we have to say, you know, so-and-so's got to go and, you know, maybe we'd hire somebody else. But if you have somebody that is creating a toxic environment, you've got to get rid of them. How do you hire and fire people? You have any, any approach on that? What were you saying? Well, you always fire somebody with respect. Well, right? Unless they're right. stealing from you. But it sounds... It sounds crazy but that's like the number one rule if they're stealing yeah. you fire them you fire them and you make it as public as you legally can mm -hmm. right yeah. because you're sending a message of that's not accepted in our culture if you're going right. to fire them i think you need to recognize as the boss that you are part of that failure you either chose them wrong or you manage them wrong or you put them in the wrong position right, right. That doesn't mean you're gonna hurt the entire organization because somebody doesn't fit. You have to protect the organization, right? Mm -hmm. And if the only option is to fire them, the first thing you need to do is put yourself in their shoes and say, how am I gonna manage this? How am I gonna do this with respect? Today I spoke, I spoke with, or actually exchanged messages with somebody who had to fire people today because of this current situation. And I told him, I have no doubt you're gonna do it well because you really care about people. You know, he didn't sleep for days. He fought to change the policies of how they were going to fire for days because he said, you know, what is right and what is wrong, right? If you take, if instead of saying, Mario, you screwed up, I have to fire you. If you say, okay, this isn't your position. I should have changed you. You share the responsibility. That puts you in a different mindset. And usually that will also change the dynamic with the person. And the other thing I go in, if you're going to fire somebody, go in and communicate and then listen. 
do not react, just listen. Be open to a different formula. That different formula may or may not cost more, but understand their environment and how that may shift. You know, getting, getting you know, comfortable is about trusting yourself and we all doubt ourselves. We all do, we have better days and worse days. I would even say if you're having a really bad day on doubting yourself, don't go to that meeting, man. If, you, if you're not going with somebody else, don't go because any insecurity you have, you're gonna project it. Right. Right? Right. All right. the guys, all the guys, I gotta say this because there's gotta <laughs> yeah, be yeah, go ahead. Go there's for gotta it. be some guys that are watching this. You know that beautiful girl that you like? Mm -hmm. And she's really amazing and she's funny and she's beautiful. And you're just like, oh my God, how am I going to ask her to have a cup of coffee? And the more afraid you are that she's going to say no, the higher the probability she's going to say no. Right? I, the same thing yeah, with the client. hundred percent. Easy to say, hard to do. We always say, I can control, I can almost control my behavior, whether I ask you for a cup of coffee or not. Yeah. If I try really hard, I can control my thoughts, but my emotions, forget it. How would you describe your customer? How do they look and sound like? Oh, that's a great question. Um, most of them are open. I would say most of them are open. They are humble. They want to learn and grow. That does not mean they are going to give up they're not going to take our advice and execute what we say. First of all, we try to give insights and not direction, mm -hmm. right? Because just like we don't believe anybody knows your business, your, your business better than you, we give you insights of what's going on and together we shift it, right? So most of our customers are extremely open, they are hardworking and they are team players because you know, to be honest with you, if you're somebody who wants us to come in and give you the answers, we're not going to get along. You know, right. you probably won't hire us to begin with. And if you hire us, it's not going to work because it's a team effort, right? If I'll give you an example, we'll get, we'll get a client that says, I want you to come in and do a workshop for two days. And I want you to make every middle manager in this organization an amazing leader. And, and, you know, am, am I a wizard? You know, do I have a magic wand? You know, and they believe it's possible. And that, you know, that's just a formula for failure for everyone. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you acknowledge that change is hard, that changing people's behavior is hard, and that if you get people aligned, that people can do amazing things, mm -hmm. and we're willing to work together to go on that path, we, we say um, that we, we travel along the journey with our customers. We go on a journey. We don't give mm -hmm. a consulting project. We're walking this journey together and we're gonna discover where we go together. There's, we're not mm -hmm. gonna give you a map. We're gonna give you direction and we're together gonna make that path. You know, do you teach leaders and say, we don't teach leaders. We don't, All right. we won't make you into a leader. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna help you release your, the leader you have inside of you. That's and it. the way you lead is going to be different than the way I lead. That's going to be different than the way, you know, anybody else leads because it has to be led by you. The most important right. thing for a leader is to be, it's an overused word. We don't like it. It's authentic. Be you. You know, mm -hmm. if you sometimes, so number one is be you. And number two, what they say is you have my back. I can trust me get mm -hmm. right if i can trust him and he's authentic those are two you know if i don't have those two i have nothing right, right. and i will forgive you for being in a bad mood one day i will forgive you for being for making a mistake another day um but if i don't have those two things there's no dialogue i'm gonna protect myself and you're my manager and not my leader. They are not the same thing. So if I have trust and I have authenticity, I trust you to have my back, then the key issues are, you know, create a culture 
where somebody's going to set the vision. You don't have to set the vision. You have to set the culture of how we make decisions and how we move forward, right? You may right. not, you may be the, but you're still the leader, but you have a scout that says, you know, we're going to go that way, right? And we debate it and we go, okay, we're going to go that way. Boom. Right? right? So you create the rules of the game and you have their back and you're you. We've all gone, we've all talked to somebody and they all said, the, you know, imagine you go see somebody and they say the perfect things. And afterwards, you're like, eh, I don't know about that guy, right? Because somehow we can sense, usually, if somebody's not being real, right? you just like, ah, oh, there's something about them, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go into work hiding something, people can feel it. And unfortunately, they're going to imagine the worst. So advice for designers, one sentence advice for designers? <laughs> one sentence. Wow, or two. Um, or if you want to. Never be okay. afraid to speak your mind. Never be afraid to speak your mind. Okay. But okay. also listen to what are the constraints that cannot be moved. Right. What advice would you give to companies who want to grow over this next decade? Over the next decade. So long term. Yeah. The first thing I would say is find your purpose, <laughs> right? right? Where are you going to add value? Right. Right. Once I understand where I'm going to add value, I can start creating, right? I don't need to know where I'm going, but I can look at the direction. Once I, so set a direction right. and, and then create the culture and define the playgrounds for the culture. Right. 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 Um, with because you have to set the playground because there's a financial constraint right mm -hmm. we can't go do you know if we've got money to create a a a motorcycle but we want to build a tesla that's going to fail right so yeah. figure out what your playground is and what your what your what your purpose is right Right. So if you set the playground and the purpose, make sure the culture can get you there. Right. Right. I think many times we fail by not stating what the playground is. So that creates confusion. Since most of our audience will be young entrepreneurs, probably, what's the best advice would, uh, that you can give to help individuals plan a career rather than simply work to keep a job? I actually had a career coach. I had a coaching client today that, that was struggling with their career. I, I think it's very similar to the company, right? Yeah. What, what, what value do you want to add? That's the first question, right? What value do you want to add? Yeah. Second is what do you need to be good at to deliver that value? Right? What do you have now? And then say, I want, I want to add that value. And I would say, don't even focus on a job, focus on the value, right? Another way to say value is what problems do I want to solve? Right? right. And then go to solve that problem. Well, what do I need to know? What do I need to know? And what do I need to prove that I know? Right. And then go back and say, today, I know this and I can prove this. I know this other thing, but I can't prove it to you. So I would say work on proving that you know it, right? right? And then look at what else do I need to learn to be able to solve that big problem and start That's learning, it, right? And when you define the problem today, I guarantee you that in two or three years, the world will change. Even if your problem has not changed, what you need to know will change because the tools have changed. The environment has changed. I think we all need to remember that today we might die. I love that. Right? And if we remember every day that today we might die, I think it forces you to look at yourself and say, what are my values and what are my priorities? And am I living 
to my values and priorities because today I might die. If we retain this much of that, you know, I guarantee you there's not one person that's inside their house today that's thinking, my God, as soon as I get out of here, I want to drive my Lamborghini. Yeah. Right? Right now, we all are worried about, you know, our futures, our kids, our parents, whatever. We want to go see that person we love, whether that's our parents, our kids. You know, right now, because of this confinement, I'm not seeing my daughter. I would kill to give my daughter a hug. Nobody is saying, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of young men that have these confinement songs that come out every day in Barcelona. And there's this one guy that's singing and he goes, I want to get drunk with my friends. I want to see my friends. I want to do this. But you know what I really want to do? I want to see my mom. Mm. Right? So right. my hope is that if we could just remember that we will die. It will change the priorities we live every day with. Right. I love that. I told you it would be a weird answer. That was, that was great, you know, <laughs> and I always remember that for myself and that keeps me motivated. And I, I tell this, believe it or not, I, I, I tell this myself every day. Yeah, so do so, I. It, it is really true. And yeah. once, once you click your mind on that and you know, you start feeling and approaching things differently. So um, I'm going to release you because I think you're, it's pretty late for you. You have stuff to do. You're pretty tight on time. I'm Sorry? terrified. Yeah. You may come up. I'm terrified of what you may create out of this interview. <laughs> I'm just going to be, I'm just going to put all the interview like for people. I think we've helped many people and organizations probably to be inspired and develop their culture because we've talked about culture a lot um and and i just can say thank you very much mario for your time you. i was really looking forward to it and and i will post there. it um okay. and i hope we can help a lot of people great great thank you very much for your time and keep growing and conquering the world like i know you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that's why we're here all okay, right take care have a good night, Mario. Have a good night. Bye.